Iceland, a getaway in the middle of nowhere with geography that is out of this world. The only word that can do this amazing country justice is magical. How's it going guys? My name is Noah VDE and I recently spent two weeks traveling the entire country of Iceland. So here's my guide on how to do it. But really quick before we jump into it, I just want to give a huge thank you to my friend Vin. He let us use his base itinerary and kind of change ours around that. So a lot of this is straight from Vin. Be sure to check out his website and social medias. I'll leave them all linked below. To do this route, you're going to need a rental car. But once you've got that, you're good to go. Bye-bye. Bye. So day one's pretty simple. You're going to go from Reykjavik to Akrens. Once you get off the plane, you can go grab your rental car, some groceries, a SIM card, maybe some coffee and then you can start your drive and make your way on over. Day two's drive is going to be a bit longer. You're going from Akranes all the way to the Snæfellsnes Peninsula and to Olafsvik from there. On your way, you should stop at Glimmer. It's a hike to one of Iceland's tallest waterfalls. After the hike and when you're on your drive, you'll pass some lava fields, you'll see some viewpoints, and then you'll make your way to Kirkjafell, which is a very cool mountain shaped like a wizard hat. Make sure you remember this is just a guide. When you're in Iceland, go down random roads, find random paths. The things you find are endless. It is definitely worth it to explore. Day three, you're going to be heading to the West Fjords. Now, whether or not you do this part of the trip totally depends on your timeline. If you have the time, great. If not, this is the thing you scratch. This drive is long, but it is unbelievably beautiful. Don't be afraid to stop as many times as you can along the drive to really just take in the beauty. You'll end the drive in Latrabjarg, which is actually the westernmost tip of Iceland. Here you'll find tons of birds, gigantic cliffs, and really scenery that you won't see anywhere else. Now here's where you have a decision. You can either finish going through the West Fjords, or you can turn around like we did. A lot of the West Fjords are gravel roads and we didn't feel comfortable driving our rental car through that. Looking back at it, we probably should have finished the West Fjords, but whatever. Instead, we just headed back to the ring road and slept in our car. Day five is all about exploring. There's a couple waterfalls when you get back onto the ring road. Galani Foss and Huron Fosser are two that stick out, as well as numerous other craters and natural hotspots all in that area. After you spend some of your day there, you can begin to head up north to Gladheimer, a very small community with a nice campground. I hope you take the time to shower in Gladheimer because it's been a couple days and you deserve it. Day six, we're headed to Akureyri, which is actually the second biggest city in Iceland. There's a couple waterfalls along the way, but they don't have names. So I'd recommend adventuring, spending some of your time doing that, and then once you get to the city, you have time to explore. Something that we used religiously while we were there was Maps.me. It's an app that allows you to save crowdsourced maps with locations such as waterfalls, hot springs, all that good stuff on it. So that's how we're able to see all of these no-name places. Next up, you're going to head to Mivat. You're about halfway through the trip, so give yourself a pat on the back. This is the first place I recommend staying two nights. There's so much to do, whether it be walk around Mivatan Lake, check out the Mivatan nature baths, see any of the numerous hot pools, visit Europe's most powerful waterfall, Dedifoss, and its little sister, Selfoss. The list just keeps going on and on. Mivatan is adventure central. Day nine, we are heading over to Sædisfjordr. On your way, I recommend you check out a waterfall called Hengifoss. There's a decent walk to get to it, but it's definitely worth it once you're there. As you're driving into Sædisfjordr, you're going to be amazed by the landscape. It's a little village at the end of a fjord, surrounded by mountains and hundreds of waterfalls. Very cool. Next stop, Hulfen. It's day 10 and we're going to have another bit of a drive. As you make your way from Sædisfjord to Hofen, there will be some gravel roads, some waterfalls, but my favorite thing is this huge beach. Covered in teeny tiny black rocks, it's a great place to hang out and explore. It just goes on forever. It was a bit of a chill day yesterday, so for day 11 we have activities planned out. You're going to make your way from Hofen to Vik. We're going to start it off by visiting the glacier-fed Iceberg Lagoon and Diamond Beach. I had never seen icebergs before this, so I thought it was extremely cool. And assuming the weather permits, you can spend hours here. After that, you should check out Svartifoss. It's a waterfall with these basalt columns making it very unique. 
And to end the day off, you get to see one of my favorite places in all of Iceland. I'm definitely going to butcher the name. I think it's pronounced Fjardalardagurda, but it's this massive 100 meter deep green canyon with flowing blue water. It honestly doesn't look real. From Vik, you'll spend your next two days in Selfoss. On your way there, check out Sejavalalog. It's super tucked away inside of a mountain valley and it's Iceland's oldest swimming pool. After that, you should also check out the abandoned plane wreck. Just beware the walk there and back is very long. Then head on over to Skogafoss and Seljulandsfoss, probably the two most popular waterfalls in Iceland. Day 13 in Selfoss, I'd spend doing the Haverigerdi hot spring hike as well as the golden circle. The hot spring hike is very close and it's not that difficult. Once you get to the top, you get to sit back in the river and just relax. I actually never filmed the golden circle, but you can google it. It's basically a popular route people take to see a bunch of the natural attractions around Reykjavik. And just like that, you've spent two weeks in Iceland. From Selfoss, you can head back to Reykjavik. And depending on how much time you have left, you can either explore the city or check out the Blue Lagoon. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, that'd be awesome if you could hit that thumbs up or the share button. It helps more than you know. I really do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in another one.